Hello everyone and welcome to the 2020 ECCOG Virtual Summer Reading Program. This program is provided to you by a partnership between Green Iowa AmeriCorps, Matthew 25, as well as East Central Iowa Council of Governments. My name is Gigi and I'm a summer steward for Green Iowa AmeriCorps and Matthew 25 here in Sierra Rapids. In this video, we have a few sponsors. Um, we are sponsored by Benton County Landfill, Iowa County Landfill, Jones County Transfer Station, as well as Tama County Landfill. Today we are going to be discussing why it is important to be aware and careful of hazardous chemicals and common household items, specifically household cleaners. So to do this, we're going to be looking at a book called What's Going On In There by Jeffrey Grant. So on the front of the cover, you can see there is a nice house, there's people and a dog inside, there's some trees outside, and on the back we have some people on almost like a jungle gym. We have some people down here, we have a dog. Let's go ahead and start with the story. This is the front page, What's Going On In There by Jeffrey Graham. Welcome to Granville, USA. It's an ordinary town, but things are not as they appear. Let's take a walk and see. And there's a dog and a guy walking his dog, walking out of his home. What's going on in there? Are those boys and girls taking a test? Shh, quiet. And it looks like they're in a school. It looks like there's a teacher. No, they're not taking a test. The drinking fountain overflowed, so everyone is taking rowing and swimming lessons. And in this picture, the whole school is filled with water and everyone's swimming around. What's going on in there? Are Aunt Martina and her friends pulling saltwater taffy? No, they're not pulling saltwater taffy. Aunt Martina is planning a trip to Mars but bringing along some saltwater taffy would be a great idea. And it looks like Aunt Martina is building a spaceship over here. What is going on in there? Are Dino and his brothers making pizza? It looks like some people are throwing some pizza dough in this photo. No, they're not making pizza here on Thursdays. Today, Dino, Bronto, Stego, and Paterio are building a dinosaur. What's going on in there? Are Derek and Eric getting ready for Christmas? And it looks like they're hanging up ornaments for a Christmas tree. No, they're not getting ready for Christmas. They're giving Octavio his afternoon bath. It's always Christmas at Octavio's. And over here is Octavio. He's an octopus and he's in a little blow up bathtub getting a bath. What's going on in there? Is Butch getting a haircut? He better hurry or he'll be late for his karate lesson. And it looks like it's a barber shop, but up here, it looks like there's people doing karate. No, Butch isn't getting a haircut. He's watching the circus. Didn't you notice a sign on the door? It says to go back and we'll see. And here, this little tiny sign says, circus today. And as you can see, he's on stilts, there's some circus animals, someone's dancing. What's going on in there? Is Eunice feeding her cats? She sure has a lot of cats. And here it does look like she has a large amount of cats. No, she isn't feeding her cats. She only has one cat, and his name is Otis. And here it looks like she has a tree in her house with a tire swing, as well as her cats. What is going on in there? Are the rackets making dinner? And it looks like a dad and a mom cooking dinner. No, they're not making dinner. Mr. and Mrs. Racket are playing tennis, but when they're done, they'll have pizza for dinner. Whoops, someone should have told them Dino's Pizza is closed today because of a dinosaur. They're inside playing tennis, 
and after that, we'll get pizza. What is going on in there? Are the Burr twins having a pillow fight? It looks like up in this window that they are. It looks like there's someone possibly watching TV in this window. No, they're not having a pillow fight. Someone left the freezer door open, so the Burr family is going on an Arctic expedition. And here, their whole house froze because someone left that refrigerator open. So there's a dog running around. It looks like there's some skis, maybe some sleds up here as well. What's going on there? Is everyone asleep? It looks like it is because the lights are off. Yes, everyone is asleep. And everyone is sleeping. And it says good night. Someone's sleeping in their bed. And there's a moon over here. Okay, so at this point in the video, we can go ahead and discuss a few takeaways and lessons we learned from this book. Go ahead and pause the video and brainstorm a few ideas that you guys think you learned from this story. After doing that, one thing that I learned is that everything isn't always as it seems. And this is an important lesson with common household cleaners as well. A lot of common household cleaners look very similar to food items that we may find in our kitchen, which could be very harmful to young children and just people in general. This is a really, really important lesson to learn because there are many human health as well as environmental health safety issues that arise from not disposing of these hazardous chemicals properly and as well as possibly getting these chemicals into our bodies. So on the side of human health and safety, if these chemicals are ingested into our bodies, many things can happen, um, food poisoning, poisoning in general, we should say, um, skin irritation, respiratory disease, and even cancer. Um, these symptoms are especially susceptible to young children. A lot of young children and people in general can have these symptoms occur. There are also environmental health and safety reasons why we should be disposing of these chemicals properly. Um, if you, for say, maybe dump these chemicals outside on the ground, they can get into a sewage drain, which can indirectly lead into a creek or into a lake, which can harm sea life there, such as fish or frogs or other animals. Um, also, you may be thinking, could I dispose of this in my sink or in the toilet? And that is still not a safe option. Um, a lot of water resources um, can still be contaminated because wastewater treatment plants are not designed to remove hazardous chemicals of these kind. Um, so yeah, a lot of reasons why this is really important to learn about and take seriously. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the first activity to show you guys how not everything in your house is as it seems. And we're gonna be comparing a few unsafe chemicals in your house to a few um, common food items and also common household items. So. Firstly, we have Gatorade here in this clear cup, and as you can see, it's very similar to Windex, which contains several harmful chemicals that, you know, you don't want in your body and may be very harmful to young children. In the second cups here, we have wooden floor polish as well as 2% milk, which as you can see, the difference between these two is not very clear and this will be very confusing to young children especially if they're just in a clear cup like this in your house. So here we have a car air freshener and we have a Starburst which kind of look similar and then also over here we have another piece of candy this is peppermint candy and a Tide Pod which both have really bright colors and may be confusing to young children. You should be asking your parents if these are safe and always ask for permission before using something. Um, if these are in reach um, at your height, ask your parents to move these items to a higher shelf just so we can ensure your safety. Again, if any of these chemicals are ingested, please contact the Poison Control Hotline, which is available for 24 hours, and the number is 800-222-122. Now moving on to the second activity, we're going to be showing you which common household items you can recycle or take to your local landfill. So here we have a few common items that you might find in your house. We have a coffee cup from Starbucks, 
we have an air freshener for a car, we have a flattened granola box, we have a fruit container, and we have some candy wrappers as well as a plastic bag. So what can be recycled is the plastic coffee cup as well as the fruit as long as you rinse it out before you recycle that. That is very important. Um, your plastic bag, um, with these you can take them to a local grocery store to dispose of them at a special center. Um, if you do not have one of those in your town, you can just throw it out, although that's not ideal because they may get entangled in your local landfill with other equipment, so it is preferable that you take it to a special place to dispose of those. Um, you cannot recycle these candy wrappers, um, and you also can only recycle part of this air freshener, so if we're just going to remove this here, um, the paper part you can recycle, but the plastic part you cannot. Um, and then also this flattened cardboard box you can recycle. Um, when you're recycling cardboard, it's recommended that you flatten it before you throw it away. Now we're going to be talking about a few common household items such as acrylic paint and as well as common household cleaners. It's important to note that cleaners and paints are hazardous household materials or HHMs and they should not be thrown away if they are not entirely empty or clean. They should be taken to your local collection program at your local landfill. Programs like these know exactly how to dispose of these hazardous household items so they do not impact people, animals, or the environment. Go ahead and talk to your parents about contacting your local landfill to find out more about your local collection program. Also, certain items such as food items, such as um, squeeze pouches and chip bags and other common household items such as diapers and bags do belong in the landfill. Don't forget to check the label because there are several mail-in recycling programs that would be very helpful as well. So now for the third activity, we're going to be making your own environmentally conscious cleaner that is all natural and great for any surfaces except for wood. Um, before making this cleaner, please get permission from your parents or a trusted adult in your home, and you'll be good to go. So we're gonna need a few things for this recipe. You're gonna need some baking soda. You're going to need half a lemon or just lemon juice. You are going to need a few things to measure, so you can use one cup or a half cup, whatever you have, um, a teaspoon, a tablespoon. You will need some Dr. Bronner's Pure Cast Oil Soap. And you will also need an empty spray bottle, which you can find at like Walmart for really cheap. So to get started, you're going to start with two cups of water in your spray bottle. We went ahead and added that already. And then you're going to need one tablespoon of your baking soda. And all of these ingredients you can just go ahead and add into your spray bottle and then shake it up and you're good to go. It's pretty simple. So we're gonna go ahead and add this into the spray bottle. You may get a little bit of a mess if it's a smaller um, opening, but that's okay. You can just add more into it. So we're just gonna add a little bit more and that should be good. Don't worry if you make a mess, we'll just clean it up later. Next, you're going to be doing two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. So I'm using half a lemon. You can use, again, regular lemon juice as well. So I'm just gonna squeeze that into the spoon. Um, there might be seeds, you can just take those out. Again, this is very helpful to do with your parent or trusted adult in your home so they can help you make accurate measurements. And then we're gonna do another tablespoon All right, and there's some seeds in there, so I'm just going to get those out because we don't want that in our cleaner. So we're just gonna go ahead and add this in. Cool. So now we're gonna be adding a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of the Dr. Bronner's cast oil soap. So I just got the mini one, but you can find this in a bigger quantity as well. So we're just gonna squeeze this into a teaspoon. So that's about half a teaspoon of this product, and we're gonna add this 
this in. And that's about all we're gonna do. We're gonna put the lid on and we are going to give this a good shake. So you can just shake it up. We have a few substances here that we can test this out on. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and spray this. It smells very good, very lemony. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and wipe this off. And as you can see, there's really no residue. And then we're gonna test this with a little bit of Gatorade. Spill that, just a few sprays. And everything is pretty much good to go. It's good to keep in mind that this cleaner is not a disinfectant, so if you are using this on a surface that had like raw meat on it, probably use a different cleaner because that would be the best idea. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on this awesome story and very important lesson about hazardous chemicals in your home. Before we go, I thought we'd wrap up with a few things that we learned today from this video. So first of all, contact your local landfill. They would love to talk to you about um, safe storage and disposal of these household hazardous chemicals. And along with that, talk to your parents about if anything in your home needs to be moved to a higher shelf or out of reach for young children, or even yourself, if you feel like it is an unsafe product. Also, talk about what the difference is between recycling and throwing something in the trash, and go ahead and make those decisions whether something should be recycled or in the trash. And lastly, don't forget to do your research on whether something should be recycled or thrown away, and always research the chemicals in products in your home. Also, you can reduce hazards or unsafe materials in your home by making your own at-home cleaning products like we did today. Um, make sure you have your parents' permission and extra help around just so you have the right ingredients and the right amounts of those ingredients. And finally, before we go, remember that if you do by any chance ingest some of these chemicals, in these dangerous household cleaners. Um, do not hesitate to call the Iowa Poison Control Hotline. It's available 24 hours a day and it is there for your own use. So that is all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Um, and you know, just remember everything is not always as it seems.